This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Atlas video. Today we're going to talk about the basics of crew. Let's get to it. Okay, so there are two places which you can get crew, one of which is in any free port. There's this guy right here. He's usually got the like glass bobbles and stuff hanging behind him. You talk to him and you can buy a level one crew member for five gold. The other place which you can get them is by killing the ships of the damned. They will fall in the water after the ship blows up. Can't really show you that because the ships take forever to kill and I just don't feel like dealing with it. But trust me, when they die, there's the loot and they're usually swimming right around the loot. All you have to do is have some gold in your inventory, put it in your zero slot, jump off the side of your ship, swim over to, to them, and then you can just hit E to essentially tame them, uh, but you, you pay them that way, and uh, then they become your crew. You can get all kinds of different levels depending on the level of the ship that you kill, so higher level ships are going to drop higher level crew, but honestly, unless you have them following you around and killing stuff with melee combat, it really doesn't matter what level they are, you can just come over to one of these guys at any free port and buy a level one. They're going to work perfectly for all the other stuff that I'm going to show you. Since we have these guys here and I'm already here, if you don't pay them, they need payment every so many hours and they tell you when they are going to need payment. They go into this stage here in which you can't do anything with them. You can see I'm actually holding down E right now. Nothing is happening. I'm not getting the menu. If I tell him to follow me. You can see now he should be following me. However, if I move, he won't. They essentially, if you don't pay them, they stand there. They won't listen to any of your commands until you give them money. And then you can see here, it actually says that he needs payment. And if he doesn't get payment in the next hour and some change, that he will mutiny. So when they have that, you can just pay them and then they will start accepting your commands and you can, you know, do all the normal stuff that you expect to be able to do with them. And you can see here that it says that he cost one gold every 1.7 hours. At one point, they did cost increasing amounts of gold the longer you had them. I've been testing that on my server and that's not happening. So I don't know if that's just a setting that I missed on my independent server here or if that's still a thing in official servers. I don't mess with them on official servers. So just keep that in mind when you have your crew that it may increase the longer you have them or the higher level they are. Once again, I can't really confirm that, but I have seen it in the past. I don't know if that got patched out and they just didn't put it in the patch notes or once again, if that's just a setting that I'm missing in my server. All right, so once you have your crew member, there's a few different things you can do with them. We're going to talk about stuff you can do with them off of the ship before we cover all the stuff they can do on a ship. So if we go up hit F, we can access their inventory. You can see that they have slots for armor, offhand, all that good stuff. They do gain levels as you use them and you can apply points into health, melee, food, oxygen, and weight. And you notice that she's a level seven with only 61 weight. Their weight is absolute trash. They started off initially when the game was released with fantastic weight, but then, you know, they hit them so hard with the nerf hammer that they're essentially useless for anything other than just being on your ship or guarding your base on a cannon. Anyway, if you want to use them for melee, you can. You can equip armor to them. As you see here, we can drag over whatever armor. I'm going to pull that back off because she's going to get a little heavy here and you can put a shield on them. They will actually use the shield. And if you want to use a weapon, they cannot use ranged weapons. If I drag this bow over, you can see I don't have the equip option, drag some arrows over, still don't have the equip option. And if I drag over the cutlass, however, and I right click on it, I do have the equip option. And now you can see that she's equipped with a shield and a sword and she can be used to attack stuff like so. She's going to slowly run over there because, you know, she has no weight and uh, attack this chicken. And so is this bull that wants to get in on the fight too. But you get the idea. So, I mean, you can use them for that, but... 
they're going to be terrible at it. I mean, she has nothing for weight and only 116 HP. Okay, melee, she's at 118.5. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, if you want to use them with that, you can. It is an option. Okay, the next thing you can do with them is you can put them on cannons that are lining your base or wherever you want to put them. Basically, cannons that aren't on your ship. Once you have them following you, you get them to follow you till they line up close to a cannon and then you look at them, hold down E and you will have the option for use cannon. When you click that, they will go mount the cannon and then they will use it. But there's a few other things you need to do uh, after that. So. If you want them to shoot at anything, you need to hold down E, go to behavior and set them to aggressive. So you see here we got the different settings. So we're going to set them to aggressive. After you do that, then you have to go to the cannon. Make sure, as you can see there, it has the option to turn it on or off. Make sure it is turned on. Then look at the cannon, hold down E, and then you want to change the targeting to whatever you want them to target. So if you just have them on this, that's all they're going to target and that's fine if that's all you want them to attack but if you want them to attack creatures or basically anything that gets near your base you have to click uh, the all targets there and you also have different uh, options like changing the range you probably want to put that on high because the cannon can actually range out pretty far then uh, you can select the ammo type if you have different ammos on them you also have to put the ammo in his inventory because your cannon does not have an inventory you can see I'm, I'm hitting F right now you just have to trust me on it there is no inventory in the cannon so you have to put the cannonballs in their inventory and of course if you put a ton in there they're only gonna be able to hold so much before they're uh, outweighed so on these ones that you're using for this basically the only thing you really want to level up is health so they can't get attacked easy if you're playing PvP if you're not playing PvP and you're only worried about a PvE type situation, then you just want to level weight and just worry about that because that's more ammo you're going to be able to keep on them. The other thing you can do, of course, is use them on your ships. So if we look at this guy and we unseat him and you can look see here that we actually have the option to move on to ship raft, which is the closest one, but he's not quite close enough to do that yet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, tell him to follow. And you can essentially just swim close to your ship. And then that option will eventually light up when they are close enough. So now you can see that I actually have the option to move him onto the schooner. But I can also just have him following me. And I can just go up here on my own. And he will follow me on the ship. They just basically teleport up here. And you can see he actually climbed the ladder that time. And then there, there you go. You have it. So I'm going to pull him to the front of the ship here. Now, the one downside to this is like you can't place them next to whatever you want them to man. You have to get them to follow you and get them close enough to it. I highly advise going up to them and holding down E, going to behavior and changing the follow distance to lowest. That's going to help keep them a lot closer to you. You can see he's basically right on my butt now. And that allows me to position him closer closer to the things that I want him to use. So you can see now I could highlight over him. I can have him use the swivel gun. If you want them on your sails and if you're going to have them, you definitely want them on your sails. Gives you a lot more control over your sailing and it makes life a lot easier on you. You just bring them to the sails. So we'll unseat this one here and you can see he's standing by the sails. So let's uh, change his follow distance to lowest. I'm going to tell him to follow me and I'll, I just want to pull him away and bring him back so I can show you uh, how you do this. So you just bring him over near the sails like so and then uh, you can see right now he wants to use the steering wheel but we don't want him to use the steering wheel. We want him to use the sails and of course he's going to be for some reason these guys really just want to use this steering wheel and this is a perfect example of how this system is extremely flawed. Let's try to move him up here. 
Yeah, okay, now we have it. So now we can use the ship sail, and then that places him on the sail. So now I can use them to control my sail. So if I get on the wheel here, let's make sure our anchor is up. So once you have them on the sails, you gain massive control over steering your ship, and it becomes so much easier to pilot these things. So we're going to just turn around here. Okay, now that we got the ship turned around, so first off, if you hit W, you will lower your sails. You can see the sails up there dropping down. So the more I hold that, the more the sails go down. And then if I let go of W, they'll actually stop. Actually, I think I took them to 100%. Oh, almost 100 so now, if I want the sails to go up because I want to slow down, I just hit S. And you can see as I'm holding S, the sails are retracting. And that's fantastic. So you can adjust your speed that way. You can also rotate them to the left and right by holding down shift and hitting A or D. So you can see uh, on the, uh, basically this up here, watch up here, right here, there is a little green symbol that pops up. So when I hold down shift, you see that little circle? That's basically telling you that you're controlling the sails now instead of your rudder. So right now without holding down shift, I'm controlling the rudder. Look at the little yellow line there going back and forth. When I hold this uh, downshift, now I'm controlling the sails. So then you can use that to, of course, catch the wind or what have you. Of course, you can see how that makes sailing super easy because now I don't have to get off my steering wheel in order to control my ship. I can just hold down uh, W and drop the sails. Then I can hit shift and I can rotate the sails, catch the wind, turn a little bit more to the right to catch the wind some more. And now we're off and we're going and we're doing stuff. So you got all of that. On top of that, you also can control all of the ones that are attached to cannons. I have ones on cannons there at the bottom and I have ones on cannons there at the top. And that is what the controls underneath your ship there are showing. So I got a bunch of different controls there that I can use to have them fire. So first off, you have your left and right mouse buttons where it says to hold them. So the left mouse button, when you hold that, you, as you can see that they're targeting. You, it shows you their targets and that's where they're gonna fire. You hold it till you get it to where you want them to fire, you let go and they will fire one shot. Now, if you want them to target something until it's dead, that would be your right click. So you hold your right click, you target something and it'll actually put a reticle on it after you uh, let go and that's how you know you have it selected. So uh, we'll find a ghost ship and I'll show you that here in a second. On top of that, you have C. The C key tells them to stop whatever they're doing. Then you have the V key, which tells them to basically fire at anything that's close by. And then if you have melee people on board, the N key tells them to melee. So the ones that I have just standing up there up front, if there was something on board for them to attack and I hit N, and then they're going to melee. On top of that, you can control different sections of your ship. If you look down at the bottom, you can have uh, groups. So you can have your taming groups just like you do in ARC and you can have those assigned. So you can see that we have taming group five, six, seven, and eight. So you can have those assigned and have them do specific things, but the important ones to look at and the ones you're probably going to use the most are one, two, three, and four. So if I hit those, you can see that I just turned all of them off. So now if I try to command them to shoot, they're not doing anything. You can see right there, it's when I'm holding it down, it's highlighting that I am telling them to fire, but we're not getting any fire. However, if we highlight the back, so if I hit two, I'm now commanding the back of the ship and you can see that I have a single uh, guy back here and he's ready to fire and he fires off around. I can do the same thing with the left side of my ship. So we do that, you can see, left side that's down there at the the bottom side there on the left that cannon underneath and then there he fires so i could just highlight those two there and now i'm only commanding those two so if you get really good at this you could actually set it up or base not set it up but command your ship in a way that you tell 
different sides to do different things. So I could just highlight back and to the left real quick. I could target something with them and then I could say hit the right side, untarget those, turn to the right and target another ship to my right. All the ones that are on your ship will automatically withdraw gold that is inside the ship's inventory. So if you have a ship resource box on your ship, just place all of your gold in there and then you don't have to worry about paying them individually. Also, they will withdraw money from the ship resource box if you have it placed inside your base. I'm not sure what the range on it is because they don't get any type of icon over their head for me to test that and testing it other ways would just be a complete total pain in the butt so I'm, I imagine the range is rather large but you'll just have to place them in your base and if your crew ends up with a mutiny thing then just place one a little bit closer to them but I don't think you'll need that many for a rather large base but it works just the same if you place this in the base as it does on a ship it's just a range type situation they don't have to be touching the same foundation or anything like that they just got to be with in range of it. The other thing you want to keep in mind is uh, you want to place an ammo container on your ship if you're using the crew to attack with. They'll just automatically withdraw the ammo from the ammo crate. Just put all your ammo you're going to need inside of it and they'll do the rest. All right, so now that we've covered all that, I just want to find a ghost ship real quick and run you through what a fight's like and how you can use your crew uh, if you're running solo. All right, here we got a, a ship. This one's kind of high level, so we might get wasted, but we'll see what happens. So we're coming up on him. I'm actually going to draw my sails back a little bit so that we're not going too fast because we are on quite a speedy ship. And now if I hold down the right button and I highlight over him, you can see that I've placed a target on him. It disappears after a second, but they still know to target it. So if we get close to it, actually he's trying to run away from us. So let's speed up here and see if we can uh, get alongside of him. All right, here we go. I think we might be in for a fight. So we're gonna try to target him again, see if the uh, crew will start firing. And you can see they just started firing and he's firing at us. I found that uh, you can really screw with their AI by like speeding up your ship and slowing your ship down. It, uh, it, it messes with their targeting a little bit. Of course, now he's making a liar of me, but uh, you have to trust me on that one. It does for a good bit. Now you can see that uh, they're just gonna continue firing. All I have to do now, now that I've marked him as a target, is just continue to stay within firing distance and they will continue to fire at the ship until it's dead or you are out of range. And after a little bit of practice, you will get the hang of hitting shift to follow the wind. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll make a hard turn and then I'll hit shift to follow up with the turn after the fact. So once again, I'll just hold shift or hold turn to I, I get a nice sharp turn. You can see I'm just blasting the rudder there to the one side. And then as the arrow starts to move, I'll just hold down shift and follow it with my sails. The other thing to keep in mind is they do need to eat. So not only do you have to pay them, you also have to feed them. You can do that two ways. You can put food in their inventory like you see here and they will eat it. Or you can make a food larder. So if we go down here to the smithy and type in L-A-R-D. You can see it is right here. If you make that and you place that down, that is essentially a feed trough for people. So if we hit nine, we place it down. It's also good for you as well. It stores your food and gives it a longer spoil timer. Cause so if you look here, we're at five minutes there. And if we put it in there, it's at 23 minutes. And you can see they're already starting to pull it out of there. So if I put a bunch in there, you can see that the little zeros are popping up. That means the crew is actually pulling it out of there and eating it. If we come over here and we look at ones that we can actually see the tops of, you can see that they have the little trough above their head. These guys have it as well. So it pretty much covers everybody on your ship. It's a nice large area and they're all being fed from that. So if you put one of those on your ship, you put one of these on your ship, you fill it full of gold, fill the larder full of food, they'll they'll be pretty much good to go. They You won't have to uh, really worry about them. You just have to make sure you keep gold in that storage box.
One other thing to note is that you can set the, the ones on your ship just like you can set the ones that are on land. So you can go up to them if you don't want to worry about like controlling them and you just want them to shoot at any ship that, that comes by. You can go up to them, hold down E, go to behavior, uh, change the uh, targeting to aggressive, then go to behavior again, change the targeting range to high, then go to your cannon or whatever they are on and then you want to change targeting from all targets to ships only. If you do, you can change it to attack all targets, but they will shoot at fish and waste your ammo. So you're best off just doing ships only. And then they'll just fire at any ship at any given point in time that you pass it. You don't have to control them. You don't have to worry about targeting or any of that. They'll just fire at any ship, whether it's aggressive towards you or not. All right, so I think that covers all the basics. Before we wrap up this video, I just want to give a big shout out to G Portal for sponsoring this episode and providing me with a server so I could test this stuff out in order to teach you all all of this stuff. So if you're looking for an awesome server host to host your own Atlas server, check out the link in the description. You can get a discount if you use that link. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.